Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be the purpose for your failures. Well, I've got four emails I'm going to go through with you today, and all four of these guys have gone through some really difficult things in their lives these past few years. And what I liked about these emails is all four of these guys went through some really difficult circumstances, but despite that, they kept moving forward. And some of them have achieved some really great successes, and some of them, their successes are just small and minor. But you get a great sampling of several guys that are different places. One guy had his wife of 37 years leave him, and he's doing really well now. Another guy had a girlfriend of five years ditch him. Another guy had his wife of, of several decades pass away on him, and he recovered from that. So there's some really great, inspiring success stories. Another dude lost 53 pounds after finding my work, got a, negotiated himself a raise, got a great girlfriend now. Just So no matter where you are in life, I've got – if you're struggling right now, I've got some really good emails to share with you. Some guys that, like I said, despite all the shit hitting the fan in their lives, they kept moving forward, kept learning from their mistakes and kept trying to get better and it's paying off for them. So I've got a quote that I wrote and then we're going to go through the quote and then we'll start in right on the first email. And the quote says, failure is a necessary part of life and self-improvement. Successful people focus on what they can learn from failure so they can improve their results in the future. Unsuccessful people avoid failure at all costs and seek to insulate themselves from risk and uncertainty. The reality is that in order to become successful and go from where you are to where you want to be requires you to take risks that do not necessarily lead to instant success and can keep you in a constant state of uncertainty for extended periods of time. The more you take action and keep moving forward towards your outcomes in spite of the risks and potential for undesired results the more your confidence and ability to persevere will grow. A spectacular life is the result of mastering empowering mindsets and becoming comfortable with things being uncomfortable and uncertain. Progress always involves taking measured risks and minimizing potential downside risks. So let's jump right into the first guy's email. He says, hey, Corey, you literally saved my life. I have watched a ton of your videos and may have given me hope. Or I should say, I have watched a ton of your videos and many have given me hope. The email is for Contemplating Life, One in the Chamber, which is a last week's newsletter. That particular guy was const- contemplating taking his life. He was like, what's the point? And this particular viewer says, and it could not have come at a more opportune time. I used to be a man, as you described, with purpose, confidence, and vitality that attracted everything to me. Three years ago, I let fear start ruling my life. Fear of a whole lot of things I obsessed over and became depressed, and all of these fears materialized. Well, what you fear you attract, but what you look at disappears. In other words, the looking at what you fear means if where you want to get to means that you got to conquer fear or overcome some obstacles that terrify you, you have to be able to move forward despite it instead of letting the fear paralyze you. And unfortunately, most of the people you're going to encounter in life, they're driven by their fears and avoiding things that potentially are really uncomfortable. So they try to play it safe. Playing it safe means you're going to settle a lot in a lot of areas of your life. If it comes to a new lover, or getting the kind of lover that you really want, that you really feel you deserve, as you get closer and closer to meeting that person or having that kind of relationship that you're wanting to create or the kind of job you want or the kind of business, you're going to be presented with all kinds of opportunities along the way that are good but they're not really great. They're not what you really want. So you're going to be tempted to settle. And that's why it's really important that you have an emotionally compelling vision for your life, emotionally compelling goals that you want to create because when you're tempted with settling and going, well, this job's okay for now or you know what, I think I'll just sit here 
or this person isn't what I really want, but they're pretty close. When you really are sure of yourself and really certain of what you want and you are unwilling to settle, then you'll say, I really appreciate this is good, but I'm not going to just sat- be satisfied with good. I want spectacular. I want exceptional. I want great, super high quality. I don't want eh or good for now. Because if you settle now, what happens in six months or a year? That job that you want comes along or that really amazing person that you've been waiting for comes along and now you're stuck in a situation because you settled. That ain't no solution either. The idea is to become what you want to attract. Create the conditions in your life that support that kind of person or that kind of lifestyle that you want showing up. And working on yourself to become the kind of person that would easily and effortlessly attract what kind of people you want in your life, whether it's lovers, friends, peers, clients, the kind of business you want, the kind of career you want, the kind of kind of body you want. If you're trying to lose weight and get in shape and everybody you know is overweight and out of shape and has no interest in getting in shape, you're going to get a lot of pushback from those people trying to get you to continue doing what they're doing. That's why it's so important to surround yourself with people that are maybe more successful and better than you in areas that you want to get better at because they'll, when you have those weak moments or those moments where you're not sure of yourself and you're going to have them, but having supportive people around you when you encounter those dark moments or where you question yourself or you question your resolve, if you have a good support group or a good group of peers around you, they'll help pull you forward versus people that are living their lives majoring in minor things. They're always going to tell you to settle because that is what their lives are all about. He says, it was more than just my doing. He says, I fucked up and my wife left me of 37 years. It was more than just my doing because during this time she also had cancer which she recovered from and we had some family drama with my oldest son causing friction. I see clearly now from your teachings how I pushed her away. I stopped giving and I stopped being a man. With me withdrawn, she concluded that she did not know who she was or what her purpose was. Her life had been spent in service of me and the family, going wherever I went and subordinating, subordinating herself. She, see, she was drawn to me and giving to me and I gave to her. She's a very empathetic person. The point is she needed to take her journey in another direction. We were high school sweethearts, married at 19. And the bottom line is I loved her intensely and we were so tight side by side with all aspects of our lives. Everyone said we were made for each other. It was very symbiotic. But with her gone, I discovered that she, the family, and our life vision were actually an integral part of my overall purpose. Sort of became the purpose for my purpose. She left a year ago to another state and the divorce became final two months ago. I have been in denial through this whole process and suffering pain... You suffered because you weren't accepting reality as it was. That will not go away even though she has moved on and no longer feels any chemistry. The hole is too large. I don't have faith in all the promises that the universe will bring something better and maybe unexpected. And that's okay. You're going to have those times where you question it. Is it ever going to get better? Will I find somebody better? Especially, I mean, you spent almost four decades with this one person. So until you find somebody better or that really knocks your socks off or does it for you in a way that your ex-wife hadn't, you're still going to have those days where you're going to question, is this real? Is this really going to work out? Is it really going to get better? What if the next person that comes along, they're not as great as the person that, they, that I had? And you'll be tested with that and you get tested in your resolve. That's why when you really want what you want, when you're in love with the vision that you have for your life and what you want to create, You'll be able to just say, hey, that girl was really great and we had some fun, but I want what I fucking want. I mean, who wants to go through life and settle? I mean, most people do it, but it's much more fun to be able to experience those things that you dream about that were once part of your vision and you get to experience them as reality. 
I had begun going through the motions with everything in my life, mostly to fulfill my obligations. The pain has become too sustained and too intense. I am contemplating checking out of this world and I was ready to do so. One in the chamber gave the article that I wrote gave me the glimmer of encouragement to continue. I put together a dating profile with your technique of letting them come to me. I checked it once a day. That was hard to do, but as a kid I used to run trot troll lines for catfish. I guess he says trot lines. Maybe trot lines is a proper spelling. I don't know. I'm not much of a fisherman. You put 15 to 20 hooks about two feet apart and you throw it in the water in the early evening. Next morning, you see what you caught. It, ser- it serves no purpose to check it through the night. And why would you check it through the night? Because you're looking for progress. Remember, in order to be successful and happy, you got to feel like you're making progress. And if you don't feel like you're making progress, then life's going to feel like it's hopeless. Each day, it was like that trot line fishing and I was eager to see my catch. It's been three days and I have two dates lined up. I mean, that's a pretty short period of time. That's, I mean, it's not like the ultimate thing, but I mean, just the fact that you did a profile, you took action. It felt hopeless, but you took action in spite of your fear, in spite of the fact that you spent four decades with that person. And anybody going through that is going to be thinking, it'll never get better than what I had. You're going to have those feelings. You're going to have those thoughts until you succeed. And the great thing is you motivated yourself. You personally decided to take action despite all kinds of reasons and justifications why you could potentially give up. I, I had this guy I used to get my hair come, cut from 20 years ago. This guy, he was like in his 90s and he'd been cutting hair his whole life when he was in the Navy, during World War II, everything. And he had this little sign. It was this handwritten kind of cardboard sign. It's like, why do I keep showing up here? And he and it with a question mark. And then underneath it said, to see what happens next. I mean, what a great philosophy. And so why put the lines out to fish for catfish? To see what happens. Why do a dating profile? To see what happens. He took action despite the fact that it seems and feels and often anybody looking at it can say, well, it's hopeless. But he did it anyways and now he's got two dates. It's a small victory but he did it. That's the important thing. No matter what happens in your life, will you keep moving forward? That's all that matters. Can you keep moving forward, keep trying to get better? I may not be really ready but I feel some encouragement in going through this exercise of putting myself out there and doing it the right way is at least keeping me alive. Well, as as Panache Desai says, life happens when you move. Stagnation happens when you die. You weren't moving and you were stagnating. And instead, you just decided to start moving. And so moving equates to life and living and experiencing and getting results. You got two dates. Now those two dates, nothing may come of it. One of them may stand you up or you might go out with both of them and hate both those girls or they may hate you. But the bottom line is you have two more dates now set up than you had when you weren't doing nothing. It's a victory. Celebrate that. Be proud of yourself. You took some action. You put some lines in the water and you got some nibbles and you see where it goes. Good fucking job, dude. Keep grinding. As Ray Lewis said, grinding is my rest. So let's go to the second guy's email. It says, hi, Corey. I'm 52 years old and I came upon your work about a year and a half ago on the heels of a breakup. I read your book twice. Come on, man, twice. But on the second read, I highlighted the key principles in every chapter of the book, which I go back and review constantly using the iBooks note feature. Okay. Well, at least you got some notes and you are reviewing it. I'm writing to share a success story as well as to warn your followers about the pitfalls of dating insecure women. I met this woman in 2010 as both of our sons were on the same Little League baseball team. We hit it off immediately as we had many things in common including being divorced, having sons around the same age and liking the same type of music. She was very kind, warm-hearted, generous and loving. There was only one problem. She was very insecure. Yeah, that's a fucking barrel of monkeys. Because when you're dating somebody that's insecure, 
deep down they believe that you're not going to be faithful and eventually once you realize what they're like you're going to leave them for somebody else so everything is about validating them so they feel better about where they are because the bottom line is they don't see themselves in a very high positive light she had history with men that were not good to her and it dated a compulsive liar for 18 months just prior to meeting me you know that reminds me there was a uh an Ayn Rand quote that I posted the other day on my Instagram and I want to go through that right now because it was so powerful. And what she said was, the man who does not value himself cannot value anything or any one. So if you're in a relationship with somebody who is insecure and they don't value themselves, no matter how good you are to them, they're still going to question you and that will drive you up a fucking wall. Trust me, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. She had a history with men that were not good to her. Well, if you don't think you're good enough, you're going to treat you're going to find people that are going to treat you like you're not good enough, which further validates your model of the world. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, and that's the way her life was. And it dated a compulsive liar for 18 months just prior to meeting me. Although I noticed this flaw early on in the relationship, I stupidly thought that over time she would see that I'm not like the guys that she married and dated before and learn to trust me. It's a logical conclusion. I'm so awesome. Why couldn't why wouldn't that just change her or fix her? Not a good way to go. So I went ahead and I allowed myself to fall completely in love with her. As a result of her insecurity, she would interrogate me about every woman I happened to associate with, be it a friend, coworker, Facebook friend, etc. That sounds just swell. She also had to know where I was and what I was doing at all times when we weren't together. Remember the Thich Nhat Hanh quote I say all the time. You must love in such a way that the person you love feels free. Do you think he felt free dating somebody like that? Hell no. She always presumed to know what I was thinking and feeling instead of asking me. Remember, people will act consistently with how they view themselves to be, whether the view is accurate or not. It really had nothing to do with you and it had everything to do with how she viewed herself. And because she viewed herself in a very unhealthy way, it was just a nightmare to date her. Incredibly, she was also insecure about my ex-wife with whom I have a horrible relationship and as a result, wanted to control the decisions I made that affected not only my ex but also my three sons. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. That shit ain't gonna fly. You see, she needed to see me act negatively towards my ex at all times regardless of the impact on my sons in order to feel secure about my feelings for her. It was her way of testing me. She always assumed that I had the worst intentions instead of the best. She lived in fear of being rejected and, or cheated on and never allowed herself to fully trust me. That's why it's so important that if you're going to date and you want to be in a long-term relationship, that you find a woman that has a really great relationship, especially with her dad. She loves her dad. She loves her mom. She trusts both of her parents. She trusts her father. Because when you date women that had bad relationships with their fathers or, or they don't currently have good ones or the father was cheating on the mother all the time or the father was never around – very very it's almost impossible to have an easy and effortless relationship with somebody like that unless they've done all the work on themselves and overcome those shortcomings there's a lot of landmines in the dating world that they don't teach you about these things in school you have to figure the shit out on your own long story short we dated for four years before the relationship inevitably ended when we broke up we we still loved each other very much but her insecurities made it impossible to continue the relationship let alone advance it to the next level after the breakup, I suffered for a long time. When we don't accept reality, we suffer. I wanted reality to be other than it was. I wanted her to be a secure and trusting person, i.e. he didn't accept reality. It's great how he realized that because that's what frees you and it enables you to move forward. It's like you kind of hit the wall. You, you get stuck in a corner metaphorically. You paint yourself into a corner, if you will. And the only way to move forward is to let go of your preconceived notions, in this case regarding what he thought she was or who she was, which he was 
in love with the idea, the fantasy of who he wanted her to be and she never changed and she never evolved to that point. It's great to want other people to grow and evolve and become better but if they don't want it, you know, as a coach, you, you can't want people to be successful more than they want that success themselves. Otherwise, you'll drive your nuts and never be – self nuts and never be satisfied. It's the same thing with people that you date. You either accept them as they are and hope that they get better and encourage them to but you have to accept the fact that they may not and they may resent you wanting them to get better. So if you're a growth-oriented growth oriented person, it behooves you to date people who are also growth-oriented. I wanted her to be the one for me even though she wasn't. I was grieving for the person I wanted her to be, not the person she was and it took me a while to figure that one out. In the days and months after the breakup, I did a lot of self-reflection and read a lot of books about relationships and self-improvement but I hadn't read your book yet. I joined Match.com and I started dating again but made the classic mistakes of engaging my emotions too quickly and over texting so I wasn't having much success. Then I read your book and started watching your video newsletters and it turned everything around for me. Reading your book and watching your videos not only taught me the proper dating and relationship skills but it also taught me what to look for in a healthy partner and relationship and equally important what to avoid. I was anxious to apply what I had learned and it wasn't too long before I had my chance again. This time I did it right and with a woman who possessed all of the minimum qualities you laid out in the newsletter i.e. secure, trusting, trustworthy, confident, flexible, easygoing, etc. We hit off in the first date with drinks and dinner at a wine bar followed by more drinks, jukebox playing and lots of making out at a pub afterward. He had multiple places lined up and each one facilitated him getting closer and closer to her. I got home at 1 a.m. We dated for three months and I watched her actions carefully before deciding to take the emotional plunge with her. This Sunday will be our one-year anniversary together and it's been the easiest, most fun and rewarding relationship of my life. Because you did the work, because you kept moving forward, you kept taking action despite setbacks, Despite the shit hitting the fan, despite the fact you dated an insecure girl for four years that drove you nuts, you kept trying to get better and now you're celebrating a one-year anniversary. That's fucking great. Good job, dude. Very proud of you. Looking back, it's hard to believe I put up with what I did in my previous relationship but I had to go through pain, educate myself and find someone far superior to her to put it all into perspective for me. Things turned out the way they were supposed to. Well, you, again, you see right here, it, it's not success that makes you better. It's actually learning from your failures that makes you better. Because most people continue to do the same things they've always done and they continue to get the same things they've always got. Corey, thanks for teaching what you do. As counterintuitive as it may seem to most men who have been conditioned by society and the media, your principles work. They just fucking work. Keep fighting the good fight, coach. Great job, dude. Proud of you. Let's go to the third guy's email. He says, Dear coach, I want to take time out to say thank you for changing my life. I found your work earlier this year. My relationship of five years ended when my ex-girlfriend was cheating on me. That fucking sucks. I was foolish and pleaded with her to fix things. In other words, you asked her, please do it to me again. I'll put up with that. I'll take all of it. That communicates you have no self-respect. You want the kind of relationship that you want and yet you're in a relationship with somebody that's just not capable of giving that to you and you stayed and you put up with it and on top of that, you invited her to do more of it. Remember, no one will ever do or say to you, to you that you don't invite them to do. We started to reconnect but it turns out she was already involved with her coworker. Her words were, it just kind of happened. <laughs> yeah, whatever, it just kind of happened my ass. After watching your videos and reading your book 20 times, I laugh out loud every time I hear that phrase. She tried to keep me around and told me she never wanted to lose her best friend. I don't want to lose you. I told her it's all or nothing. I walked away and I spent the next few months going through the motions and involved with your work. I realized my faults and my successes from the relationship. In other words, he did some 
introspection, some self-reflection, said, you know what, I need to change a few things because my strategies are not working and they need to be tweaked. I focused more on my career in an architecture firm. I got a raise, found a new place, and lost 53 pounds to get into shape. That's fucking great, dude. I got back out there and dated other women. I am now currently with my girlfriend I've been with for the past two months. She recently told me she loves me. I'm shocked, shocked, I tell you. You follow what I teach in my book. It takes about exactly seven weeks for a woman to fall in love with you. He's right about, it's right about two months. Just happened, textbook. Just like the sun coming up in the east and set in the west. She makes my heart skip a beat. It's funny how life can change over a year. I can't remember the last time I've been so happy. That's fucking great, dude. I wanted to thank you for your work. I still listen to your book via Audible every couple of weeks to stay sharp. Keep up the good work. Good job, dude. Great success story. Let's go through the fourth and final success story email. He says, hey, coach, first and foremost, thank you for what you do. I spent six years in the Army. Thank you for your service, dude. And about 30 years as a firefighter. My wife passed away about two years ago, and I was devastated. Sorry about your wife, dude. We had a 41-year relationship, and the last 20 years together were in marriage. I was absolutely lost when she passed away. Yeah, when you're together with somebody for four decades, I mean, your whole identity becomes associated with being in that relationship, and all of a sudden, they're gone. Your friends, your family, what you do, your activities, how you sleep, how you eat breakfast, how you eat lunch, how you eat dinner, where you go, who you do it with. Everything is based around what you are together and then all of a sudden, it's just you. After about a year, I met a woman who became a very close friend and I wanted more. I became the needy bitch and regurgitated my feelings to her. She in turn friend zoned me. Again, I was devastated. So I hopped on my motorcycle and I left for three and a half weeks. Kind of like Forrest Gump after he gets dissed by Jenny once again, he goes for a run. Grows a beard, grows his hair, it was a great movie. What I found, and the interesting thing about Forrest Gump is that he always loved Jenny for the way she was, but he always wanted her to be different. And if you notice kind of towards the end of the movie when he just kind of accepted the fact that she was a nomad and she was gonna come and go, she finally came and stayed with him. And, and they had a child together. What I found was that when you step back and look at the whole picture, it makes more sense. Two days into my trip, your video showed up on my spam folder and I began to watch and watch and watch. Then everything made sense. I got your book and as of now, I'm on my 12th reading in about two and a half months. Pretty good. And yes, I could give a seminar on it. I found it wasn't so much about picking up chicks, it was about gaining my self-confidence. Success with women is really about how you view yourself and how that causes you to interact with other people. I realized that although I fucked up, this woman had narcissistic tendencies and all things that were my fault were not. As in your book, I talked to everyone the same, friendly, interested, and caring, and the response is fantastic. Yeah, if you see every person you meet as an ally and somebody that you already kind of know but maybe you haven't talked to in a while and you kind of treat him just like a friend you may have not seen in a while that you run into at the grocery store, completely different vibe. And when I have met the most beautiful women, it's like breathing and it's just natural. I've only recently returned from my trip but my fear is gone. I approach the most beautiful women and engage in conversation. I get phone numbers and I just continue on. Just as practice, I put myself out there and one woman was buying me drinks and the next took me out for dinner and drinks. What I found most interesting was when I came home after my trip, my daughter handed me an envelope that had my letters to and from my wife when we were courting. Keep in mind, that's four decades ago. What I read confirmed that when I was courting my wife, I was totally alpha and your series has brought me back to who I was. Thanks to you, I am who I always was. That's fucking great. Because 
you know, when I get emails from people and they talk about what they're missing or what they're lacking or what their problems are, it's not really a demonstrating of lack. It's the fact that you're consciously choosing to show up and not demonstrate who you are to the world unapologetically. And it's very rare to come across people who have kind of woken up and are marching to the beat of their own drum. And for those of you that haven't got my audiobook yet, it's available at audible.com. And if you subscribe to audible.com, you can get it totally for free. And if you'd like to get my help personally, you can go to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page of my website, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever coaching option works for you. And I will talk to you soon.